Hey everyone, this is Victor from Growth Evolution Development Ground, gdground.com. And in today's video, I want to talk to you about copywriting. I want to talk to you about what copywriting is, what does it mean to make a sales copy, and so on. So to begin with, I want to say that if you're engaged in any way in the internet in making money online, doing online business or anything of that sort, you're going to have to learn copywriting. You're going to have to learn the basics of how to make a sales copy. And the good news is, is that it's not a rocket science. You, you, with, by using some of the tips and tricks that I will later share with you, you can make pretty good sales copy and persuade the reader to do the thing you want them to do. Now, so what is actually copywriting? What does it mean to make a sales copy? Well, when you write an email, a marketing email to someone, you want them to do something. You have some kind of a call to action, right? You want them to buy your product, for example. And to what, what you're writing to them, that's a sales copy. And what you're doing is you're copywriting. So you're making an email, you're writing a text that's meant to help them buy your product. And in copywriting, the idea is that you move around certain words, sentences around each other in a nice way that make it more persuasive for, for, for the reader to go and do the thing you want them to do. So in a nutshell, you just write a nice paragraph and it's kind of commercially and advertisement-y and marketing-y and the person ideally in a good ideal world goes and buys your product. But if we're talking about copywriting, it's not always just about um, selling a product. The call to action, which is the thing you do in the end, which is the thing you ask the reader to do, can be really different. Maybe you want them to call a certain number, for example, call you for, uh, for some kind of... Uh, I don't know, maybe you want them to sign up for your classes or something like that. You want, you want them to call your number. You, maybe you want them to click a link you have in the end. Maybe that has nothing to do with selling. Or maybe you simply want your idea, or you want to get across your idea, your thought, and maybe ask them to, uh, to watch out for the next email that's coming. So either way, um, good copywriting is not only about selling things, but it's also a good way to write text that, in, that make the person interested, that really catch the person's attention. And you can, simply, you can you know, simply want to share your ideas with them, and it's still good to know how to grab their attention, right? So copywriting can really be used for many things, but it's especially important with, in the context of selling because the best way to measure your copywriting skills is by how much sales you can make from an email, for example, that you send to your uh, subscribers. So what's the conversion? If, if you send an email that you thought is going to be really good and you know you, many people will buy your product and nobody ends up buying your product, well, maybe, well, m maybe many things <laughs> can be wrong in that email, but also like your for example your product but also of course your writing style maybe you wrote it in, in a very boring way nobody even cared to read through that email on the other hand i good marketers can get people to be interested in even really you know um even simple and not really interesting products that's the power of copywriting and writing a good sales copy so that's in a nutshell what it is and um, to be honest, in the beginning, when I started doing things online, I had a really hard time getting used to the idea that you have to write your text in a very marketing type of way, in a really salesy type of pitchy way, because I'm not used to really selling anything. Every time I... I I even like I even have, like some product. I use it. I could totally recommend it, but I feel really weird about um, recommending it to people. Well, not anymore actually, because I've come. You know, I'm okay with it now. But before, I would be like really weird about. It. I feel like I would be doing something wrong. And if you're like me in any way, then um, if you're in that way like me, then please try to get over yourself because this is the language that. The internet understands and what I came to realize at a certain moment that if I don't learn how to make my emails more uh, salesy then other people will always go ahead of me the competition will always eat you and you need to stand out somehow and it's good to have a good product or a good idea but a good a way uh, 
in which you present it is also very powerful because um, you can have all the ideas and products you want, but if you're not able to introduce them in the correct way to the people to people who you're uh, trying to introduce it to, then they're never ever gonna you know come to you for that product or service. So I've come to realize this, and I I learned uh, I learned this skill. I'm still learning. I'm really bad at it, but little by little, every day I I just do different skill do different things to improve my skills and I write my blog and that's how I improve day by day my copywriting skills and of course for some people it, it comes more naturally than to others there are those really famous marketers who it feels like they speak in a copywriting style like everything they say sometimes doesn't sound very honest because it feels like everything they say is that they're just trying to sell to you but this is also um, in certain contexts this is a good thing because uh, if that's how you make money then it only makes sense for you to practice it as much as you can to really get used to speaking in such a way and writing in such a way and like I said in the beginning, it's not rocket science. I'm going to share with you now 10 tips that you can take take away from this video and use them every day when you write your uh, blog posts or just anything uh, right when you're, you know, trying to maybe write a uh, affiliate market affiliate email or something like that. Uh, you can take away these ideas and use them and they will help you with your uh, conversions. So the first thing that I would recommend you to do if you're looking into how to improve your copywriting skills is to is to go into your email and really find all of those emails that have been sent to you that are that were marketing emails basically emails where other people try to sell you something and I read about I I started doing this after I read uh, Dan Locke's book called F U Money which is uh, I highly recommend this book and he taught he talks in this book how he that's what he started doing he started studying these emails and he was just so interested in how people were writing and how you know brilliantly they were putting their uh, the thoughts and sentences around and it really pushed people to buy stuff and that's exactly what I did I started I wanted to unsubscribe from all these you know crazy marketers in my email that I've once subscribed to but then I didn't because I actually realized that that's um, a good way to learn how to do sales copies how to write uh, sales letters and so the first thing, like I said, uh, go into your email and find and study those emails that were are meant uh, to sell you something. Now, the second thing what you want to do is when you write a sales copy is to use uh, short sentences and paragraphs. Don't write these complicated book type paragraphs, right? These long pages. Nobody needs all that extra fluff. You're just going to confuse the reader. Use really short direct you know to the point sentences explaining exactly what you want to explain without all the unnecessary things um, ideally try not to make long sentences try to maybe make paragraphs that are at most like three lines at a time because people can focus on these things a lot more easily when they read short you know bursts of information as opposed to something long a person who's not eager to read much they won't even you know start they won't even bother with your email if they open it up and see this huge you know romance so make sure you're keeping it simple really um uh with short sentences and paragraphs now the third uh, tip is of course like i said keeping it simple uh, don't use the scientific language speak like you would speak normally every day do this casual talk it really needs to sound really you know like a a really you know a personal thing you don't want to go there and you read this really complicated text just keep it simple as if you would be speaking to your I don't know mother or to a friend and say only the things you want to say and if you for example um, uh, if you're looking at you know professional advertisements you see very small pieces of text and that's because they want to keep it simple as a matter of fact by keeping it simple and only giving you parts of the information it will only get you more curious about the other things if that's the product that you're looking for and then the rest of the research you can do on your own you know the reader they will go and continue looking for that product on the actual website or something like that so really keep it simple now the fourth thing is think like the reader and this is very important 
um, working in the IT field, I've always been taught that when you when I create an app, an application, I'm not creating an application the way in which I would want to have it. I'm not even creating an application in the way that I want my uh, customer to have it, the, you know, the people who asked me to create the application. No, I'm creating the application for the end users, for the people who will actually be using that application. And I need to put myself into the shoes of those people and really see the app as they would see it. And what it means in the context of copywriting is, is don't, if you know so much about the topic that you're writing about, forget all of that. You're your reader. Think about how the reader wants to see this email coming from you. What they don't know, what they know. Don't assume ever anything. Just expect that they know nothing. And don't ever write from the perspective of yourself when you're writing a sales letter or just a, you know, when you're doing any kind of copywriting. Always put yourself into the shoes of others and think like the reader would think. Um, number five is have a structure. Just like you were taught in school, have an introduction, a body, and a conclusion to your sales copy. This is very important because you don't want to have a random amount, a random set of texts and letters and words and paragraphs. Um, yes, copywriting is about putting everything nicely around, but you still need to have this structure. And in the introduction, you introduce the product, you introduce why you're writing the email, and um, what you have to offer. In the body of the text of the sales copy, you're, you're writing the, the main key points of the product or service you're, or the, the story that you're trying to share with your reader. You're, t you're telling them what it does, how it does it, and why it can s solve the pain for the reader. So what's in it for the reader? Again, you're sharing the main key points and you're doing it you know, directly without the extra fluff again. Um, that's the body of the sales copy. And then finally, in the conclusion, you sum it all up and you once again uh, go through all of the things in a shorter form and you have the call to action in the end. If you want the person to click on that link, tell them to click on it. If you want the person to call that number, call that number, tell them to call that number. If you want them to contact you, tell them to contact you. Don't forget to have that call to action in the end. So this was number five, structure. Number six is include a personal story. Now, I, I told you a couple of times already that you shouldn't have any noise in your email, you in your text, you shouldn't have unnecessary information and fluff there. But if you have a story that very well goes together with your email, your product or service, please share it because stories are a good way to connect with readers. That's the, when a reader, um, when you're trying to explain how something can solve something and you give a real life example of how it was able to solve your problem, you can very well help readers better understand how it's going to be solving their problem. That's the moment when they say, aha, now I know because this is exactly the problem that I often come across. So make it more personal. A good way to make, make anything personal is to tell a story. This gives it a little bit more of a human touch because I'll be honest with you and you've probably noticed it also when you're reading sales pitches, you're listening to them. They sound really like, like you don't really want to listen to them. But when there's a story, a personal uh, piece of, you know, a personal part, a part of a person of a, life, a person's life in that email, you're like, okay, this is not a robot. This is not a marketer writing to me. This is a person who's also had problems and this thing has been able to help them. So if you can, if there's a, you know, if it fits nicely, then please, by all means, share a story. Um, number seven, have a catchy title. This is a whole science already on its own, but the thing is that if you're, for example, sending an email, the title or the, you know, the, the email, you know, the title in the email box, in the in, in, in inbox, <laughs> you will see the, only the title. And that's what really determines whether the reader will um, continue to the rest of the email or they won't. Because uh, the rule of thumb is if your title sucks, um, you're not going to be, the reader is not going to go on to read your email, even if your email is good. And the same is with the blog post, for example. If you have a really boring blog post title, 
um, the people are not going to read your blog post. You know, they say that don't judge a book by the cover, but the truth is that many people judge books by covers. It's, uh, it's true. So, for example, if you had a title such as like 10 ways to become healthy, that's not very catchy. That's, uh, it, does, it, it explains kind of what it is about, but it's not really, it doesn't, it doesn't sound special. But you could change the title and make it sound a little different, such as these 10 tips will change your, you know, these 10 health tips will change your life forever. Or I can't, I couldn't have, I can't uh, understand how I lived without these 10 health tips before. You know, something like that, like make it sound more interesting. And that's the way to catch the attention. And, and everything starts with catching the attention of the reader. In, ter in the context of text writing, you know, it's the title. In the, con in the context of speeches, it's the first, you know, three to five seconds where you have to catch the person's attention. So use that part wi wisely, really focus on the title. Um, number, number eight is create a sense of urgency or the use the scarcity principle. And what this means is that if if your product is on sale and it's ending soon or you know, the sale is ending soon make sure you mention it if there is a limited amount of seats you know for your seminar or something like that mention it but please don't lie don't create these fake you know stories of how only three seats left or only on sale today and then you see the sale forever like some you know people some websites have the sale price there forever. Because the thing is that you can do that, of course, but your readers will see it sooner or later. They will, you know, understand that you're lying to them and your, um, your trust will be gone forever. So you don't want to lie. But if you do have something like such as, you know, a limited amount of seeds or a sale is ending soon, then do mention it and mention it a couple of times to really create the sense of urgency that they need to get it. They need to get it really soon or they'll never be able to get it again. Or that, you know, the scarcity, it's not enough. There's only, you know, two seats left. And if those two seats are gone, then they'll never be able to, you know, get this uh, seat again to this seminar, for example. And this is one of the most effective techniques used in marketing. And I know myself that if I'm there on the edge somewhere that do I, I, I'm enjoying some, I want to buy some product. I know I'm going to enjoy it, some service or product. I'm really there on the edge that should I get it today, tomorrow, maybe not at all. And if I see that it's about to be gone, I will buy it. I've bought it. <laughs> I know this works for everyone. This works for me. It's one of the most effective techniques used in marketing. And this is what you should do in copywriting if it's true and if it really, um, if there is a uh, scarcity involved or you know a limited time of something uh, number nine include testimonials um, what i mean here is that if you're for example browsing on amazon and you're looking for a product you can have the same product uh, almost you know the exact same product and you'll see one product that has no stars no reviews at all one has for example 20 five star reviews and one has like a thousand five star reviews you're always well most of the time you're gonna go with the product that has uh, you know the most amount of uh, positive reviews because that's social proof you know that many people have tried it out already and they know that the product is good and often people think that you're scamming them because well let's face it on the internet there's a lot of scams and if you can um, include a link to maybe some testimonials or then you can like quote some people saying things about your product directly in your email this will increase the uh, social proof of the things that you're writing to people they'll be like aha so maybe they're you know they're not scamming maybe this is worthwhile you know having a look at so if you can include testimonials also very important social proof is a big thing in copywriting uh, and number 10, last but not least, don't forget the CTA in the end. I put this into a separate uh, piece, separate tip, because I've read very many um, good sales copy sales letters that were doing everything according to the standards of copywriting. And in the end, there was no clear call to action. So I really didn't know what to do. I just simply read the email and it was very vague what they wanted me to do. So make sure you include that CTA. Don't be like me. Don't make that mistake. Don't feel bad about asking the people to go out and check your product. Don't feel bad about it. 
um, don't feel like you're manipulating people because this is what I thought for, for a long time. Uh, don't feel like you're hypnotizing them and doing things they don't want you to do. No, you're using marketing techniques. You're using psychology to better explain what your product, that's a good product, that's a quality product, right? You're not scamming them. You're not selling some total crap to them. You have a good product and you want people to find it. You want people to buy it, right? So why not use the best of what psychology has to offer to make people understand that your product is worth it? And always keep in mind that in the end of the day, it's not you who is hypnotizing them, the people to buy your product. It's not you who is controlling them um, and making them do things they don't want to do. In the end of the day, it's their choice. They are the ones that decide that will they buy your product or service or they won't. So have that CTA in the end. Don't feel ashamed of putting it there. Bring value up front. Show how your product can change their world, how your ideas can change their world. And then in the end, don't be ashamed of asking them to do something for you. So these were the 10 tips. Hopefully you have a better idea of what copywriting is and how it is important for you if you're trying to, you know, do things online and how you're, if you're trying to make a sales copy. Um, if you have any other questions, of course, please feel free to share them in the comment section below. If you've liked this video, hit the thumbs up for me and I hope to see you in the next video. Please subscribe if you liked this type of content. Thanks.